This is the first of a three-part series on how to make a mesotint. The first video will explain the process and show the preparation of the mesotint. The second will show how to work the copper plate. And the third will involve the printing of a mesotint. Together, they should provide a thorough introduction to the process. Mesotint is an engraving technique made on a metal plate, most commonly copper. Invented by an amateur German artist, Ludwig von Siegen, the first mesotint was printed in 1642 and was the first printing method capable of truly reproducing tones. The lush, velvety values of mesotint were favored for regal and aristocratic portraits, but the amount of labor involved in the process prevented it from flourishing as a creative medium. Mesotint was soon eclipsed by other emerging reproductive media, first by the intaglio technique, the aquatint, then by lithography, and finally by photography and digital imaging. In intaglio printing, a rough surface holds ink and smooth areas are wiped clean, which makes them print lighter. The most basic way to understand mesotint is to think about going from dark to light. You make it rough, then you make it smooth. To make the copper plate rough, we use a mesotint rocker. And then once the plate has been rocked, we use a burnisher with a curved ending and a scraper with a straight ending to lighten or smooth the plate out. We're going to start with a blank copper plate. And you can see the light glaring off of it here, off of the blank surface. And then we're going to rock the plate with the rocker so that it doesn't reveal any more of its surface. It's entirely pitted or covered with small dots. In order to rock the mesotint plate, we want to think about cross-hatching, because that's essentially what we'll be doing. So if you're not familiar with cross-hatching, it involves making a close network of parallel lines, which creates an overall appearance of value in a given shape. And then in order to build up darker values, we do another series or another hatch of lines at a slight angle and then perhaps another. After eight different values or directions, there's no more paper showing and so what we see is black. That's essentially what we're going to be doing here with a mesotent plate. But we're starting with a plate which has a certain size and shape to it. And so in order to do one direction, we have to overlap our cross hatches a little bit. We have to do a second layer, or a second hatch, and a third hatch. But there's also a phenomenon that happens with the mesotint rocker, because as you're using this rocker, you're actually going back and forth. And so your mark is like this. And what that means is that it's going to be digging in a little bit in these outer areas. And so in order to compensate for that, what we want to do is overlap our cross hatching. So I'm going to do another directional hatch like this and another one like this. and so on, and then we've got one direction of hatching. We need to do that over the entire plate in eight different directions at least, usually 12, maybe even 24, in order to cover the copper entirely, as we're trying to cover the paper entirely here. So what are those eight directions? Well, we've got vertical and horizontal. We've got a 45 degree angle. We've got another 45 degree angle. And then we've got slight angles, slightly off of the vertical, and slightly off of the vertical in the other direction, and slightly off of horizontal, and slightly off of horizontal in the other direction. So if we do our cross hatching like that,
And if it's not entirely rocked, if we're still seeing some flecks of copper in between there, well, then we can go in any other direction to finish up. It really doesn't matter at that point. You're not seeing directional lines anymore. You're just seeing coverage. So that's how we're going to work with cross hatching on the copper plate. The first step in preparing the plate for mesotent is to file the edges and corners of the plate. These are sharp edges, and if we don't file them down, we might potentially break the teeth off the rocker. As the rocker goes back and forth over that edge, the teeth can easily be knocked out, and it's very hard to resharpen a missing tooth. So I'm going to start by filing the very corners of the plate, the sharpest parts. Now I'm ready to file the edges. In filing the edges, I'm going to try to get a about a 30 degree angle with my file on the plate edge and to rock or rotate back and forth across the plate as I'm also going up and down on the file, keeping that 30 degree angle. If I go down too low, I might actually scratch the plate. You want to watch out for that. And if I'm just staying in one place, either this way or this way on the file, I'm not going to be really taking away much metal. So let me get that angle here. I'm just clamping the plate down with my hand. You might want to use an actual clamp. And that's a pretty good edge on the plate there. A tool called a mesotint rocker is used to roughen the surface of the copper plate. A rocker has a curved steel blade with ridges on one side and a tapered edge on the other, which creates tips at the teeth of the curved blade. Rockers come in many different sizes with varying numbers of teeth per inch. For beginners, I would recommend two and a half to three inches and either 85 to 100 teeth per inch. They come in more efficient sizes, which will rock a greater area of the plate, and more specific sizes, which can be used for detail work, but not for rocking the entire plate. As you're rocking back and forth with the rocker, you want to go close to the edge on both sides, but not up on the edge, as this can dig into the plate and cause problems. But you do want to use the bulk of the rocker to be most efficient. As you're rocking back and forth, the rocker should naturally walk. But you want it to do it in a very tight network of lines. So that, for instance, if you're using an 85 tooth rocker, you should have about 85 lines per inch. And this way, you'll have a close network of cross-hatched dots. Rocking the copper plate evenly can be quite difficult, especially with a hand rocker. A simple tool to make the process more uniform is called a pole rocker. Pole rocker simply has a counterbalance, extra weights on it, and can be a substitute for the forearm from elbow to fingertips. 
So with the pole rocker, one can rock evenly and not worry about the irregularities caused by movement of the wrist or fingers. A guide made out of shelf liner will help in the cross-hatching process. On this shelf liner, I have drawn the eight different directions that will be required for my cross-hatching. First, I'll align the plate in the vertical orientation and rock across the surface. Then I'll move it to the first direction, second, third, fourth, and so on, keeping track of my directions as I go. Okay, now I'm ready to start rocking. I've got my plate lined up on my shelf liner in the first orientation, the vertical orientation. And I'm gonna start at the edge and rock back and forth across the plate. Trying to make sure that my wrist is locked in position. And all of the movement is from my elbow. I like to put some padding underneath my elbow, too, to make sure that I'm not causing any problems. That's one direction. Now I'm going to overlap that, continue with the same direction. and so on. This is the finished rocked plate, which is totally pitted, and you can't see any sh light shining off the surface anymore. This will hold solid black ink. At this point, you can start to make the image, and that is done by using a burnisher or a scraper and flattening that burr back down to a smooth surface. The smoother it gets, the lighter it prints.